Hey everybody, I'm Banjo Jen. I'm a singer-songwriter from Sheffield in the UK and I play Fraylin or Clawhammer Banjo um, as the kind of lead instrument uh, for my songs that I write and I decided to do a little sort of series of tutorials on here um, just to help people starting out really with the style just to get everybody kind of started off and uh, start from scratch and build it up. I often sort of get asked at gigs about the style and some people wanting to, to kind of begin playing so I thought now would be a good time seeing as all the gigs and festivals are, are cancelled at the moment um, so uh, I'll just do a quick demo of the style so you get an idea of whether you're in the right place or not. Uh, I hope you are because I love this style of playing um, and want, want people to, to join me in it. Um, so let's have a uh, let's do Banjo Picking Girl. Um, I'll sing you a chorus of that, that's a song that I often start gigs with, it's a really old song, it's not one of mine, it's, a, it's an old one, traditional one. <laughs> to play and um, I love it because my main focus is songs rather than tunes. Um, I know a lot of banjo players tend to want to kind of learn old tunes like fiddle tunes and stuff and they want to play note for note and um, that's that's great if that's your thing. Um, I, I want to sort of relax a little bit more and not so much worry about like individual notes all the time um, but get more just the feel of the song and be able to kind of have some fun with the rhythm and stuff. Um, so I think it's a brilliant style for that. So um, if you've clicked on this tutorial and, and you're thinking about this style, I suppose you, you might already be aware of this, but there's kind of two, um, I don't want to say two styles of playing because there's loads and loads and loads of different styles of playing, um, but I guess there's two kind of main dividers with with banjo styles and they are you know people that do upward picking styles and people that do more the downward uh, style so um, you know the upward picking you'll often see people using the finger picks um, they might have the big resonator banjos um, metal picks making more sound on the strings it's very fast ding 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 ding, ding, ding often up the neck and um, you see that a lot in obviously like bluegrass styles and stuff and um, so that might be maybe what people kind of associate with banjo a little bit more that that high twangy sound but then you've got the downward style um, which goes by various names uh, you know anything kind of old time frailing claw hammer overhand um, it, it all pretty much means the same thing but it's a downward stroke and you, you are still using notes, you, you can pick out individual notes, but it's not as um, kind of note based, I guess, as some of the, the more finger picking styles, um, because the idea with the sort of overhand and the, the frailing claw hammer, whatever you want to call it, technique, um, is it's quite rhythmic. And while we do use notes and we can we can do all fancy things to get extra notes, there's this kind of quite a driving rhythm behind it. And I really love that because that helps with songs um, and it, it's fun to kind of work with that rhythm uh, when, you, when you're playing songs and, and kind of relax into it. So uh, I love it. I think it's an amazing style. I hope you agree and I hope that you want to kind of have a go. So, like I say, we're going to start from scratch with these. I'll do a series of them, so a bit further down the line we'll put in fancy things. Obviously, when I was doing that demo then, I was, I was putting in some fancy things with this hand. We don't need to do that yet when we're starting out. Um, like anything, we've, we've, we've got to start slow. Uh, I would say, you know, there's so many tutorials on YouTube. Um, please look up loads, you know. I I just kind of wanted to do these to pay it forward a little bit because I taught myself um, a few years back. 
There was a, a teacher on here um, called Patrick Costello, who I can't recommend highly enough. Um, he's got amazing resources, both in book form and things that you can order um, and free on here on his on his YouTube channel so please look him up you'll, you'll learn absolutely loads um, and a lot of what I teach will be quite similar because he really inspired me when I was learning but I think it's good for you to um, you know just just go to quite a few different teachers and tutorials and and you'll you'll get a bit of something from from all of them because i think that's the good thing nowadays with all this technology you can you can dip in and out of all of them can't you and, and get a little bit of something from each one so i'm not going to go through loads of like technical stuff um and kind of uh instrument based stuff because again there's there's already quite a lot online about that um Obviously, you know, you've, you know the main aspects of the banjo, you've got your kind of head, the, the drum part. Um, some banjos have the resonators on the back um, to make a louder sound. Uh, bluegrass players always tend to play with those kind of banjos. Um, sort of more frailing claw hammer players, uh, you'll often find, like me, have a, an open back banjo um, that doesn't have the resonator on. One advantage I find of that as well is that it's much lighter. Uh, I'm sitting down now, but usually when I play, I'd be stood up and uh, they're really, really heavy, the ones with the resonators. Um, this is your neck. Obviously, you've got your four strings and you've got your fifth your fifth little string here. OK, so we're focusing on the five string banjo. Obviously, there are banjos um, that are sort of more like tenor banjos and uh, ukulele type banjos and all sorts of things. But but we're going to focus on the, the five string banjo. So. To get started, I suppose the main thing is just to make sure you're in tune to begin with. So we tune our banjo to open G generally, and um, there's loads of different tunings that you can play around with in the future, but um, generally a banjo is kind of in open G, and especially when you start out, that's what we're gonna we're gonna stick with. Um, I have to say it's still the main thing that I always play out of open G. Um, so I remember that <laughs> as good dogs get biscuits daily. <laughs> All right, because your, your high string, you sort of, some people call it a drone string. That one is a, a G, a high G, so that's your good. Your bass string, that thick one, is your D, so that's like a low D, so that's your dogs. <laughs> and then you've got a sort of more middle G on that third string. Second string, you've got a B, and then first string, you've got a higher D. Okay, so good dogs get biscuits daily, and that gives you an open G chord. Okay, um, what you might want to do to begin with is get yourself uh, some kind of tuner. You know, you can get these little like clip on do for what sits, um, and they'll sort of tell you uh, what, um, what you're playing and whether it's a bit sharp or a bit flat or whatever so you can get one of those and just get your get your strings in tune when you get a bit um sort of more familiar you'll be able to sort of tune it by ear because you can go up the frets and make sure the strings are in tune with each other but we'll we'll maybe focus on that a bit more detail further on um for now get yourself a tuner get yourself in tune open g okay so the main thing about the frailing style, I'm going to call it frailing, by the way. Um, it, like I say, frailing, claw hammer, overhand, they're all pretty interchangeable. Um, but I've always considered it frailing just because the main people I sort of learn bits from tended to call it frailing. Um, so I call it frailing. Um, and the, the difference with this style to your picking styles um, or if you used to maybe guitar is that everything is on the downward stroke okay so you're always going to use the back of your nail therefore you're going to find that you want um, a decent nail on either your index or middle finger preferably both because you might decide to interchange them further down the line um, but you're going to pick one for now to play with and you're going to need a decent nail on that finger I find nail hardener helps and not letting it get too long helps because then you've got less chance of it getting ripped off. <laughs> um, I find if I let them get too long, they've got more chance of catching on stuff and ripping. So I don't keep them like that long. Um, I don't know if you can really see. Uh, 
So they're not that long, um, but they're just long enough to be able to catch the strings properly. And like I say, I put nail hardener on to just try and keep them a little bit harder than they would be and a bit more... Uh, uh, chance of them surviving so um, what I want you to do is just with your index finger or middle finger whichever one feels more comfortable there's no right or wrong you can use either and um, just have a go at strumming downward across the strings you don't really need to get worry about that fifth high string yet but the other strings just sort of do a brush do a strum down the strings Try it with both fingers, you know, try what it feels like with your index finger and see what it feels like with your middle finger. If one feels a bit better than the other, maybe just start out trying with that one. I'm going to go with my middle finger for, uh, for this, uh, this time around, okay? So just get used to that downward stroke. Okay, fairly straightforward. And we've got a free chord, of course, because we're in open G. So we already know a chord, yay, we're in, uh, we're in G. And um, so we're playing a chord just by doing that. Obviously, you're not just going to strum, you're going to be uh, picking some notes, or I shouldn't say picking really, because picking makes people think upwards. Um, striking might be a better word, or hitting, because <laughs> we're going to kind of hit the string with the back of the nail. So this time, instead of strumming, I want you to just hit maybe the first string because that's the easiest to hit. So just with the back of the nail, just strike downwards onto that string. And then maybe try a strum and a strike and a strum and a strike. And everything is going to be on this downward stroke and I think that's what sometimes guitar players find hard I've had a few guitar players say to me they've tried frailing claw hammer style and they, they can't get their head around it and I think it's because they're so used to sort of picking um, and, and having upward strokes in between stuff um, that the idea of doing everything downward is just really really weird um, so it just takes a bit of getting used to so like I say just maybe on that first string just strike and then strum strike strum strike strum strike strum okay and then we're gonna add a thumb into that so um, the thumb in frailing style is pretty much always going to live up here on this fifth string. <laughs> there are um, exceptions and further down the line you might want to try drop thumbing and playing other strings with it but for now we're always going to be up on this fifth sort of drone type string. Um, okay your high G there so just practice putting your thumb on that string and pulling it away so that you're plucking that string and that is going to kind of repeat after the strum each time and that's why um, some people call it a drone because it's it's repetitive and you're using it in each motion um, it's not I suppose technically a drone because it's not running all the time and we're we're choosing when to play it we can miss it out um, but uh, it, it you know it is part of the main action so it's it's quite repetitive so that main frailing kind of strum is going to consist of striking a note downwards, doing a strum downwards, and then picking with your thumb. So it's note, strum, thumb. Note, strum, thumb. Note, strum, thumb. Note, strum, thumb. And it helps if after you've done your sort of strum down, your thumb lands on that string, ready to ready to pull it away, okay, and make the make the noise on that string. So note, strum, thumb. Note, strum, thumb. Note, strum, thumb. Note, strum, thumb. Okay. So that is your basic frailing action that's what this hand is pretty much always doing but there's a very sort of particular rhythm to it 
and this is where you might hear people talk about bum ditty rhythm bum ditty bum ditty bum ditty bum ditty um because it, it, you've got your sort of single note that first strike downwards is what they call a quarter note and then you strum the thumb at eighth notes so they're kind of half and half of the length of that first note okay now quarter notes and eighth notes can get a little bit confusing um when i first started i just tended to think of it more as like a one and a two and a three and a four and a, and i found that easy to understand um if we're talking strict musical theory which i'm not very good at um i suppose it's one two and three four and because they're quarter notes in a bar or whatever so it'd be one two and three four and i find it easy to just think one and a two and a three and a four and a, so um you know don't shoot me for not being too technical but i just find that easier to remember so that rhythm is like a one and a two and a three and like i say that's pretty much all this hand is gonna do so the good news is once you've mastered this basic frailing strum you know you've got the foundation of everything else that we're gonna do uh, with this style this hand is like your machine hand this hand's gonna do some more fancy stuff it's gonna have to hold chords it's gonna have to do some extra little fiddly bits but this hand is the machine hand that does pretty much the same thing most of the time so just get um you know get comfortable and just practice that over and over again i would start like i said just on that first string by the way when we talk about banjo you'll you'll hear me and other people use the sort of numbered strings uh one two three four five one starts the furthest away from you that one down at the bottom um, so that's your one, two, three, four is your bass, and then your fifth is the high drone string. Okay, um, so that number one string tends to be the easiest to catch when you're first starting out because otherwise you're kind of trying to use the back of your nail to come into these other strings, and that's a little bit trickier. So just start with that first string. You don't need to do anything with this hand. You can just hold the banjo. We're not we're not pressing any chords down because we've got our free G chord. So just try the one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a... Okay, when you've gone through that a load of times, then maybe try hitting a different string and um, because we're in a G chord we can hit any string we want and it's going to sound good we don't have to faff about putting um fretting anything so you could try first string second string first string second string third string first string third string first string yeah so you can just kind of play around and then don't think about which string you're hitting but just kind of aim at the banjo and pick whatever one you hit <laughs> you're in open G so any string will do one and a two and a three and a four and a okay and you just need to do that over and over and over again and it's like anything when when you're learning you know you want to be able to do everything now that's human nature like it, you know that's just the way it is but you've just got to kind of get um get that pattern etched into your brain um you know because it's that hand uh hand brain coordination isn't it and making it do something that maybe doesn't feel very natural to begin with particularly if you are um, already a guitar player or something and you know you are used to kind of more up picking this downward action is going to take a little while just to get your head round um, what I'd say is you know this part of your thumb you might find um, is quite handy to sort of rest on the banjo head 
um, we don't want it kind of rigid so it can't move um, but you'll find it kind of brushes against the head a little bit as you're doing your stroke and that that kind of anchors us in place a little bit because what you don't want with this stroke is a big arm movement we're not talking going you know we're not we don't want any big arm movements if you notice when I'm doing it it's literally you know just my hand really that's moving it's coming from the wrist the wrist is quite loose so you can use your hand but the arm is still okay so sometimes um you know that helps to maybe just have that part of your thumb kind of resting so that when you're doing the stroke you're close to the strings and you're not coming out here what you don't want is some kind of strum and a flourish going out here because then you've got to get back to, to pluck that string with your thumb and as you get sort of further down the line this strum is going to get faster and faster so you really want to be ready on those strings so having that part of your thumb just sort of resting above the strings on the head of the banjo can just help keep you close to the close to the strings and kind of anchored in place like I say it's not rigid otherwise you wouldn't be able to move um, but just it kind of brushes along the head a little bit um, and just kind of play around with it and just kind of get to the position that you feel comfortable with but just try not to make it a big arm stroke it is just more of a, a hand movement and keeping the wrists quite loose okay so you need to just do that over and over and over and over again until that starts to sound um, or starts to feel rather more more natural um, and obviously w once you've got that down you know that you, you've going to be free to do everything else then we can put the chords in we can put extra notes in uh, we can speed it up you know because a lot of the time like when I was playing that intro like banjo picking girl it's fast speed you know we might be my hand's doing exactly the same thing as we were just doing but it's it's sped up you know one and a two and a three You know, so we're gonna get to that, um, but to get to that just takes time and you've got to start slow. So your homework is to just do that strum over and over again. One and a two and a three and a four. Try hitting different strings. keep it in open G for now don't worry about chords what we'll do next time is um, we'll we'll add something on the fretboard um, we'll add a chord and then we can maybe play a little song or a tune um, with the G that we know and, and another chord but yeah just we need to get we need to get this strum right first this is the foundation of everything okay so I hope that's helped get you started off and uh, I'll see you next time all right cheers everyone